Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have fall apple DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree and I use a lot of thrifted items today too. So for our first DIY, we're gonna use some of these little sunflowers from Dollar Tree and some of their cute little wooden apples. And then I'm going to fill up one of these little ceramic um, baking dishes. This one says fresh picked apples. And the first thing that we're gonna be decorating today is my coffee bar for fall. So I kind of took inspiration from the dish itself. It had apples and sunflowers. So we're gonna kind of go with that. Now I kind of wanted like in more of an orangish red um, color for my apple. Um, instead of just the bright red. So I just mix some red and orange together. And then just using a little makeup sponge, I went in and painted all of these little apples. I want it to be like super full um, with tons of apples like and sunflowers like peeking out of it. You could also do like a faux dessert or something like that, like some faux bread or something like that. That would be really cute too. Um, I'm just gonna fill up the majority of the dish with just some floral foam from Dollar Tree um, so that I can fill up the main part and I can line the top of it with the apples and the sunflowers. So just a little carving here on the floral foam to get it just the perfect size. And then I'm also going to cover that up with some of the moss from Dollar Tree um, to cover up all of the green styrofoam. Now it's time to load it up with apples and sunflowers. I kind of wanted the apples to be like really obvious. It's gonna be like up on a shelf on my coffee bar. So I want it to look like it's full of apples, but then I also want these cute little sunflowers to be peeking out. If you haven't checked out my last video, I did a whole video of sunflower DIYs. I love sunflowers for fall. They're such a happy flower. And the contrast with the apples and uh, the bright sunflowers on this are really cute. They're already on little wire picks, so they're super easy to DIY with this. All you gotta do is kind of stab that down into the moss and the floral foam. And I just kind of want to fill the whole thing up. So just kind of an interesting take on something you can do with those little dishes from the Dollar Tree. Um, they're so cute. I love them that they've been bringing these in for every season. This is how it looks on my coffee bar. Super cute, fresh picked apples. I think it totally sets the vibe for the coffee bar. Now, these say they're pumpkins and they're from Dollar Tree. These are the little like braided ones. And I don't think they look like pumpkins. I think they look like apples. So that's what we're gonna do with them. Since they're already on sticks like this, I thought it looked like a candy apple, you know, with a candy apple with the stick in it. So I picked up two of them, um, one like a darker brown and one like an ivory color. And we're just gonna cut the little sticks down this one was a little bit damaged, but that's okay. We are gonna make do. So it'll look like little sticks sticking out of candy apples. And then I kinda wanna display those together on that little Dollar Tree sign there. So I'm just gonna pull off the little pumpkin stem here so they will sit flat, kind of upside down. And then um, I just need to prepare the base. I thought this would make a great base because it's just about the right size. This is just a Dollar Tree sign. And um, I think the word, it had a word on there that kind of just even fell off. Um, I'm gonna use fingernail polish remover to try to remove the paint on there. Um, Cause I kind of like the wood stain on there. So this is um, an attempt at that. It did work, but it took a little bit of elbow grease. And I just wanted to make a little pedestal that we could like write candy apples on or something like that. So that's what we're gonna do. I just go in and freehand with a paint marker candy apples. My paint marker wanted to kind of mess up a little bit there, but you know what? We're not going for perfect on this one. So I do go over it with a couple coats just to kind of make that stand out a little bit. And I will decorate that a little bit more. I try to distress it a little bit to clean it up 
but I just want to display these as is. I think the two different colors look like two different varieties of like candy apples. So I just attached them to the base with a little bit of hot glue. And I think these are going to be a really cute addition for an apple coffee bar. We're also going to be decorating an apple tear tray for fall um, later on in this video. Now, this one stick was a little messed up, so I just touch it up a little bit with a brown marker to make it look better, and I decided it needed a little color, so I'm going to go back in with a red paint pen, and we're just going to kind of outline this, color in my little apple on there, just make it look a little bit brighter and neater. But all in all, super easy. I still think those look like apples, not pumpkins. <laughs> what do you guys think? And this is how it looks on my apple coffee bar, candy apples. I think they're really cute like that. Okay, the next DIY, you guys have seen me remake this sign a million times. Um, I wanted to make an apple sign for my coffee bar and this is just an old thrifted sign, but I did an experiment and I Mod Podged one of those little cardboard pineapples on there for summer and I wanted to see if it was hard to get off and it was, so I haven't done this since. But the strategy I used to get it off uh, was just a wet towel soaking that. I used heat, I used a scraper. The only thing that really worked there, as you can see, was fingernail polish remover. You know, I always buy that at the Dollar Tree and I always use it for crafting. You would not believe how many um, instances you could use that. Now, I kind of want to mask everything I did on this sign before. It's just an old palette sign, and I think it's been painted on here like probably 20 times, but it's the perfect size for the top of my coffee bar. So I just mix like an agave color and make it a little bit lighter for this nice blue color. And I know you're thinking blue, that doesn't really go with apples, but it does go with my house and it goes with my coffee bar. I have blue coffee makers. So I thought the contrast to the blue with all the apple stuff might actually be really pretty. Now for the apple, I'm gonna use one of these little galvanized metal apples from the Dollar Tree. And that's gonna be my display piece over here. And then I'm just gonna freehand this sign. So I just do some block letters with a Sharpie on there. And um, I, cause I want it to look like an old farm sign. So an old farm sign would not be perfect. But you know what? If you hate freehanding, you could always use your Cricut for something like this. I go back with a paint pen and fill in all my letters. Now, I also want it to kind of stand out a little bit more, and I didn't really like the streakiness of the paint pen, so I did use a small brush and go back in with like some ivory, give it just a thicker coat of paint. I kind of like the imperfect feel of it. Then I'm gonna use one of these little wood arrow signs from the Dollar Tree. Don't need a hanger on the back of mine, so I just pull that off. And we're gonna have like apples with an arrow, like you would have like pointing towards an apple farm or an orchard, I guess. And I'm also gonna do you pick out of these little wooden letters from the Dollar Tree. Now for them, I thought I would give them a quick stain. So um, I'm just using ivory mixed together with a little antique wax by Waverly to kind of give me a weathered wood look. And I just stain all of my letters that color and we're gonna have the arrow be ivory. Now, I didn't really wanna leave this like, um, just the galvanized metal. I wanted our apple to be a little bit more colorful. So I tried to fill the holes there with masking tape. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. And then I went over the entire galvanized metal apple with some Mod Podge. Y'all have told me that it makes these things easier to paint. And so let's find out. I kind of want a red and orange mixed together like we did before. So we're just gonna paint our apple that color. The masking tape was kind of a fail. On the wood, it really blends in, but on the metal, it totally didn't, as you could see. So we removed that, tried to touch that up with paint, and we'll actually just use the holes to attach it to our little apple sign. And now it's time just to put it all together. And I think that the blue actually works. It's really cute. And I took advantage of the little holes up here just to use some little tiny nails from the Dollar Tree to nail that through to my thrifted sign. I kind of sketch out a little bit more of a 3D feel with my gold Sharpie here, um, just like on the right side and the bottom of my letters, just to kind of make them pop a little bit, make them not quite so plain. 
and then give them a good sanding because I do want it to look kind of rustic. Now it's just a matter of attaching our letters. I spelled out you pick. You can also do just like the letter U for you pick. That'd be really cute. Um, any kind of you pick or anything like that on a farm sign is always fun. And then I have my little directional arrow sign here for the bottom. So a pretty easy um, sign DIY, but I think it's going to look really cute at the top of my coffee bar for fall. I finish it up with a distress of Antique Wax by Waverly just to bring a little bit more warmth to the color. If you do too much, you can kind of go back with your original color. Then I decided that I kind of wanted my apple to pop a little bit more. So I decided to outline all the edges with some white just to make it kind of pop out from that blue sign a little bit more. And then on my little directional arrow, I am just going to use my brown paint pen and just like right this way on it just to kind of make it look kind of a cool and handwritten. And this is how it looks on the top of my coffee bar. Now for the next DIY, we're going to do a DIY apple cider. I think that's fun for fall. I found a great glass for that at the um, Dollar Tree in like their kitchen glass aisle. And I thought we could try to make it with some of this clear glue that I picked up from Dollar Tree. I didn't only had like um, one bottle of the clear glue. So I'm going to have to mix it with school glue because otherwise I'm not going to have enough to fill it up, which wasn't ideal. And it probably made our apple cider a little bit cloudier. But, you know, the school glue does, is supposed to dry clear. So we're going to see what we can do. Now to dye it, you might want to use food color. I just used a little bit of yellow paint um, just because it was kind of an experiment. Put it all in there, mixed it all together. I love doing like fake beverages and stuff like that with the clear glue. Um, it doesn't always last a long time. I don't know if it's a Florida thing, but in mine, like it's it evaporates over time or like a hole starts in the middle. But where I'm sitting it up on my coffee bar, you really usually can't tell. I decided it didn't really look like apple cider that much in that kind of cloudy yellow color. So I did mix a little antique wax by Waverly in there to give me some more color. And I'm just gonna kind of play with it here a little bit. If I could get it close to the apple cider color, I am gonna be good to go. So I just give it a good mixing and then I'm just cleaning. I have to clean up this side as well. Because any place with any of that on there, it's going to kind of stick. And I want it to look like the beverage is just in the glass. And this is the perfect glass. I think really think it looks like something you would be drinking apple cider out of. And I couldn't find any cinnamon at the Dollar Tree, but I wanted some cinnamon to be sticking out of the apple cider. And you know, I had those little wood dowels left from trimming down those little pumpkins that we used for candy apples. So I thought if I'd put two of those little brown dowels together, it's going to give you the appearance of cinnamon. So I just kind of stick that down in there, kind of tacking them to each other with hot glue because they'll kind of stay in place. And the glue will harden around that and kind of keep that in place. So that's it. That's our little apple cider. Let me show you how it looks. I can't really show you at this angle. It did have like some bubbles in there, but you know what? It did clear up a little bit um, after it sat for a day or two. And then I also got this little homemade apple cider um, signed for a dollar at the Target dollar spot. So I thought that would be something really cute to sit next to it and make it obvious that it is supposed to be apple cider. And this is how they look together on my coffee bar. Um, I like my little faux cinnamon. It actually worked out quite well. I wish I had more of the clear glue because I think that works a little bit better, but it did soften up a little bit in color. Now they have a lot of great apples at the Dollar Tree. Sometimes you can find them at odd times of the year. This one is a super shiny one though. And I thought it was gonna kind of take away from the glossiness, you know, everything else on the tear tray is kind of farmhouse. So I'm just gonna tone it down just by using matte Mod Podge all over. 
It's a beautiful color of red. I've seen these like in red and green, I believe. But you know what? We're going to use a lot of thrifted apples today too. Like something like the apple is something really easy to find at Goodwill or any of the thrift stores. You would be amazed at what you can find. I love how this turned out. I think it's like the perfect level of sheen and it's a really nice ceramic apple for the coffee bar. And I just sit it there between my apple cider and my little dish full of apples and sunflowers. Now for the next DIY, I picked up this great little apple pie sign at the Dollar Tree. It's kind of cheap and lightweight, but it's got like an apple pie recipe on there. So I thought we could DIY this and make it a lot better. By using some of the little chunky slat craft wood from the Dollar Tree, we can make a really quick, easy, like little rustic frame for this and kind of make this an art piece for the coffee bar. Now this year they have these also in like a flat long sign. And I use something similar for my new coffee bar that says hot apple cider. So that's another option you could use. But um, I wanted to show you how easy it is to make a frame out of this. So I just cut two of the craft wood pieces down the length of the sign. And then I'm going from the very top of the top board to the very bottom of the bottom board and cutting down the other two pieces. Um, basically, it's going to make it a nice heavyweight sign. It's not going to have any trouble standing up on its own. And it's just going to make it look so much more high end with that really thick, chunky wood frame. Now, I don't want to leave it like natural wood like that. I wanted to give it a little bit of a stain. So, next, ivory paint with some antique wax by Waverly. It kind of gives me this nice driftwood color. And I'm just using that to go over all of my wood. Um, you pretty much have to stain most of it because you're going to see the inside of the frame, the outside of the frame, the front of the frame. And then we can just put it all together. Easy peasy. No miter corners or anything like that for a rustic frame, and it just makes it that much easier. Just attaching it with hot glue. It is thicker than the little Dollar Tree sign, so it does kind of peek out a little bit in the front, which kind of makes it easier to sit up, and I can sit it against my back wall on my coffee bar. And it's gonna be a nice large piece. It's gonna fill up a lot of the area. I get all four pieces. I just glue them on the top bottom first and then both of the sides. You could always use wood glue for this, but I use that Gorilla Glue hot glue and it seems to be pretty sturdy. I don't have any issues with that holding up. And how cute is that little apple pie? I love these little recipe signs, especially for kitchen decor. I think they are perfect. And this is how it looks on my apple coffee bar. I think it turned out so cute. Really doesn't look like a Dollar Tree sign. Now, sometimes you can find apples and stuff like that just in the regular crafter square. This was actually like a rub-on transfer that says my teacher on there, but I noticed an apple on there, so I thought we could use it to make a cute little sign for the coffee bar. I kind of had an area that I kind of needed something small, so we're just gonna do a small sign with just a simple apple on there. So I just cut out the apple part. That's really the only part I'm gonna need to transfer. And then I grabbed a Dollar Tree sign. I love these signs. They are very thin, but they are made out of a nice um, heavy wood. And I'm just gonna use some ivory to kind of cover up the black sides that were on there originally and try to cover up any of the writing. They have these in all different kinds, like um, sometimes there's pictures on them, but if you give them a couple coats of ivory or white, you can kind of start with a blank canvas like this and do whatever you want. I kind of wanted a wood grain for this, so I thought the ivory would make a nice background, and I don't want any of the writing shining through, so I make sure to give it a good mask. And then I'm gonna go back in with my Antique Wax by Waverly and kind of do a faux wood grain just by working in one direction and distressing the sign. Now this little rub-on transfer is so easy to use. You just peel off the back, kind of stick it wherever you want, and then you just have to use something um, to kind of scrape it on there. You can use like um, one of these little Cricut scrapers from the Dollar Tree, a credit card or popsicle sticks. Um, you want to get it good and down. And when you are pulling the plastic part off, be sure to check every so often if some of it is coming up. All you got to do is lay it back down. 
do a little bit more scraping and look at that, it came off perfectly. I thought that was super sweet as is. I didn't really wanna add any kind of word or anything to that, but I thought we could add a little texture with just a little twine bow. So I just take some twine from the Dollar Tree tie a simple bow and we're just going to use that to decorate our little apple and then i'm just going to kind of stick this to the wall of my coffee bar with some double-sided tape super cute and so easy now the next item is thrifted i actually got this half price it was like a dollar fifty at goodwill and it's like a giant apple it's like 3d it's really cool um it is old um, so all I'm going to do is kind of, you know, clean it up a little bit. It's a nice large piece. I think it's going to look really good up on my shelves. I, I noticed it was like a little dirty, a little discolored. So I'm just going to kind of try to brighten it up here with a fresh coat of ivory paint. I do kind of want like the seed pattern and stuff like that to be on there. So I'm just kind of doing a quick stain try to take away some of that yellow tint. I didn't really want it to be that yellow. And then just wiping off the excess paint there with a paper towel. We're just gonna give it a quick touch up. Sometimes these items from the Goodwill have been sitting around for years and they might just need a second life, but a fresh coat of paint is always gonna make everything look better. Otherwise, I love this piece. It's very like kind of farmhouse. It's made out of some nice thick wood. And I'm gonna touch up the sides as well with kind of the red orange color that we've been using on all of our apples. Otherwise, I think it's good to go. This is how it turned out. And let me show you how it looks on my coffee bar. Isn't that cool? I think that's a really fun touch. Okay, up next, I found this apple at the Dollar Tree too. This one's a little interesting because it's got like the little dimples all over. Again though, extremely glossy, doesn't really go with the farmhouse vibe. So I'm gonna do the same thing we did on the other apple and just give it a little matte Mod Podge makeover to take away some of that gloss. Otherwise, I love the bright red color. I think it's gonna be perfect for my apple coffee bar. Now it also has like a little apple leaf and a stem on here and it doesn't really make sense if those are red. So I'm just using a green paint pen and going in and painting my leaf green and then a brown paint pen to give a cute little apple stem. And I kind of like the rustic feel. I didn't want my green to be too perfect, but this is how it turned out and it's the perfect size as well. Now, we um, used these before for the candy apples, but since I think they look like apples, I'm just going to use one as an apple for my coffee bar as well. But this one, I'm just going to pull off the stem and use it upright like that. Really, I'm not going to add anything to it. Even the stem looks like an apple. It doesn't really look like a pumpkin Dollar Tree. <laughs> Now for a simple little apple banner for my coffee bar. We are going to use these little wood apples from Dollar Tree in their fall section. And we're going to do four of them so we can spell out the word fall by using some of those little wood letters also from the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to use that same red and orange mixed together and a little makeup sponge. And we're just going to go all over the apples, that bright red color. I usually like to use like an odd number instead of an even number when I'm making a banner like this. Or, um, but I wanted to spell out the word fall, so it had to be four apples. For a contrast, I'm just painting the little fall letters in ivory, so it'll kind of pop against that red apple. And then it's just a matter of putting it together. Just a really easy little apple banner for fall, hot gluing each one of those to our little apples. Now I'm just gonna string that on some Dollar Tree twine that I cut down for the same size as my coffee bar shelf. And this little garland was so easy to put together. I just used one of those giant needles from Crafter Square and just strung it through these. It's gonna kind of be leaning up against my shelf. And so I think that they will lay flat, but if you have problems with that, you could always use twine on in each individual apple and tie them individually to it. But otherwise mine look pretty good here. This is how it's hanging between my two shelves on my coffee bar. I think it's so cute and the wood looks really nice on those apples, right? Kind of stained them. 
Now, another thrift find. I got this at Goodwill, too. It's a really nice apple basket. Doesn't really go with, like, the colors and stuff that I have going on in my house, but we're going to give it a quick cleanup and DIY to kind of make it go with my coffee bar. I'm going to first distress all of the wood with ivory, kind of give it, I want to give it kind of like a whitewash look. My coffee bar is like an ivory color, so I kind of want it to blend in a little bit with that. So I just put that on there and kind of wipe off the excess paint with just a paper towel. And look how great the back of this basket is. It's pretty cool. I thought it was a little large to hold K-cups for my coffee bar. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use it to display like my um, disposable coffee cups that I use all the time because um, I'm usually on the go and I'm drinking coffee. And so this worked out perfectly. So it's just a way you can take something like this um, thrifted that's totally not your colors and stuff like that. And just kind of make it your own. Now for the apple part, it's like brass, which is super cool. And then it's got like that little um, wood stain behind it. So we're just going to clean this up and give it a touch of red for the apple to kind of make it pop. With just a paint pen and then green for the little apple leaves. But I love the brass on there. I totally wanted to leave that. I think that looks really cool. I just kind of wanted to stain that little wood a little bit. And we're going to leave the inside of the basket just brown like that. I think that's fine. But otherwise, it's going to totally match my decor a lot better. This is how it looks on my coffee bar filled with coffee cups. And this is how my apple coffee bar came together. This is a quick sneak peek. I will show you all around the coffee bar um, in the final reveal later on in this video. But I wanted to give you a quick peek of how it all came together. Those are my blue coffee makers. And I also used blue cups from the Dollar Tree because um, it kind of matches that apple sign. I think it turned out really sweet. It was really easy to put together. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about my Facebook group. I always have it linked in the description below and my Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. We'd love to see you over in the Facebook group. Okay, let's get to decorating a tiered tray for fall with apples. I found this great little cast iron apple. What is this called? An apple press? It was like cast iron. It was a little beat up. And so um, I'm just going to clean it up with some paint like we did before. I'm doing ivory first on the areas that were kind of a wooden and um, brown. And then I can go back over that with some brown to touch that up. I'm also touching up any of the black cast iron because it was a little bit rusted with a black paint pen. I think the piece is really cute. So I thought it would be perfect for a tear tray. And like I'm saying, like apples, thrifted, definitely can find some cool stuff. Now for that wood grain, I'm just dragging um, Antique Wax by Waverly over the areas that we painted ivory. And it's just going to clean that up. Any of the areas of it that weren't beat up, I kind of left it as is. I'm just trying to um, kind of make it look a little bit cleaner. I don't want really any rust on there because this tear tray is going in my kitchen for fall. I thought the apples could use a little brightening up. So I'm just going to go in and touch those up as well. The red apples kind of make them pop. And I got a little bit of Antique Wax by Waverly on them, I think, and maybe some of the apple leaves. So I'm going to kind of clean those up as well with some fresh paint. But I think this is going to look really cute on my tear tray, and it's kind of the star of the show. Maybe a little bit more caramely color on my wood to kind of make it all go together. And a little bit more black on the bucket. I think it's so cute. I love how it turned out. Okay, for the next apple tear tray item, I thought we would use one of these little plastic jars from the Dollar Tree and fill it up with these little wood apples. I love these. They also have these like in mushrooms this year. I think they're so fun for fall. I'm just going to go in with some crimson chalk paint and paint all of our apples red. 
I thought I could do like a jar of apples. I ended up not liking it though and it ended up taking it in a different direction and just decided to do like a wood bin um, from the Dollar Tree for, full of apples, like something that you would like find at a farm. I did all of the stems brown too, just to kind of make them stand out. This was a jar, didn't like it. So I grabbed one of these little wood bins. These are great for tear trays, they're the perfect size. And I don't like the natural wood, so I'm just gonna stain it all over with some antique wax by Waverly. And then we can use one of those little fall signs for the front of that. We can just do a wooden crate full of apples. I think that's gonna be perfect for fall decor. It's just a matter of getting all the different areas of the crate stained. And then for the farm fresh, the little wood sign from the Dollar Tree, I just give that a quick paint job with some ivory paint and then hot glue that to the front of this bin. It's a perfect size. Now I want to fill it up with hay um, for a filler. So I'm going to use one of these little hay bales from the Dollar Tree and unwind it to fill it up with hay. And then I can fill it in with apples and it can have the hay kind of peeking out from underneath, but I made a huge mess with that, so maybe not. <laughs> now I get this for 99 cents at Goodwill too. It is a little kitchen timer that's like a little barrel of apples. And since this tear tray was going in my kitchen, I thought a little kitchen timer would be perfect. I love it. And then I also found, this is like a tear tray starter pack um, from Target Dollar Spot. And the reason I wanted to open this one is because it had a little pick your own apple sign in there. And so that's what we're going to use for our tear tray. Now it's time for a DIY. I saved a little pie tin from a little pie, like one of those little snack pies, um, to make a faux apple pie. And then using some felt from the Dollar Tree, I picked out three colors that were similar to what I wanted for a pie. And I just cut out a circle shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of hot glue that to the top of the little pie tin for our like dough for our crust of our apple pie. And then I picked out like this caramely color of felt and I'm just gonna cut down little strips to do like the little lattice on the top of a little apple pie. And I think this turned out so cute and it was so fun to make. So I did three strips across and then I'm gonna do like three strips going the other direction and we can kind of weave those in like you would do an apple pie. Actually, I think only two is probably gonna fit that direction. And um, I also wanted to do the crust for around it, like the perimeter. So I just cut out another piece of that, the same um, size as the little pie dish. And we are just gonna cut that out. And I just want a ring though. I don't want like a whole circle like that because I want you to be able to see um, the, the softer color of ivory underneath of it. So I just cut out a little ring shape by cutting another circle like right inside and that's gonna kind of seal in my pie crust and make it look golden brown like something that came out of the oven. So I just use hot glue to attach that first. Kind of like that and then we can start doing our little lattice by hot gluing the strips on. I do one side at a time that way I can do the weaving pattern on the top of our little apple pie and then we can always trim it down later. So the three pieces going this way, I just hot glue them to that crust that we made and then I'm going to switch directions, go this way, weave it in between and hot glue that to the other side. This was so easy to make and it turned out so cute. And I'm gonna make it not so flat either. I kind of want it to look like a nice full apple pie. And I'll show you how I do that as well. Now I can glue down these strips since I've already weaved it in. And then um, we can just trim off the excess felt after that. I really love how this one turned out. And again, I don't want it to be super flat like that. So to fix that, I just kind of pulled up an edge and took some pillow fluff and just kind of stuffed it so it looks like it's raised a little bit in the middle and not quite so like flat on top. 
And there's our little apple pie. Now, I found this for 99 cents at Goodwill, another apple. So if you can't find them at Dollar Tree, be sure to check Goodwill because these things have been decorating kitchens for years. There's so many great apples out there. So I love it. I think the color is perfect. It's kind of like a rubbery glass. It's kind of hard to explain. And then I wanted to do a little chalkboard um, for the um, like apple pie, kind of advertising apple pie for the kitchen. And I have this little white framed um, chalkboard. I think I got this at Dollar um, General for a dollar, but I know they have these at Dollar Tree too. This one was just about the perfect size for what I wanted, but I didn't want it to be white. So I just stained all of the white part with some antique wax by Waverly, and we're gonna make a really cute little easy chalkboard advertising apple pie at this kitchen. Now for chalk, I'm just gonna use a white paint pen. You could always use chalk if you wanted to. And I'm gonna put like today's pie, kind of like you would have in a diner. And then I'm gonna put apple for the flavor. And then I'm gonna use one of those little apple pie um, wood, I guess they're like clothespins from the Dollar Tree. But I just want the cute little apple pie out there. So I'm just gonna use some pliers to try to take the clothespin off the back. Sometimes those come off easily. Sometimes they kind of fight you. And then I give it a quick stain with some antique wax by Waverly. And then we are just gonna kind of hand paint this with some paint pens. We have like a little red apple here. And then I'm gonna paint my pie to look really cute as well. And we can attach that to our little chalkboard. And I think this turned out so sweet. I just use different colors of like white and tan, kind of want it to look old and distressed as well. And then I go over the whole thing with some more antique wax by Waverly. And we're just gonna glue it in the corner of our little um, tripod chalkboard and it's ready to go. Now I thought it'd be cute to do a little truck with an apple in the back. So I'm gonna use some of those little wooden apples from the fall section at Dollar Tree again. And one of the little um, wood trucks from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. And I wanted to do a chunky, large apple in the back, just one. And so I'm gonna do that by gluing three of those little wooden apples together to make a nice chunky piece to put in the back of our truck. Now I'm not really gonna change the construction of that truck. It's kind of like held together by two little sticks, but we're gonna make this work. I think this is really cute. And you can kind of decorate this truck for whatever you want. I thought we would do a nice bright red apple and then do a green truck. And I think it's gonna look really cute for fall. The only tricky part is painting this truck is that you kind of have to paint like the inside and all the different structures because you're going to be able to kind of see it sitting on a tear tray. So I paint both sides, inside and outside. I'm trying to make sure I don't get any paint in any of the cutouts either. But isn't that a cute little truck? You guys know I love decorating with trucks. I think they're so fun. It must be because when I was little, I lived on a farm in Missouri. <laughs> So I also paint the stem of the apple that same color green. And then I'm just gonna add a little um, jute twine bow here to decorate our apple just for fun. And then I thought we would just glue the apple in the back of the pickup truck. I did notice it needed kind of a little bit of a spacer. So I'm gonna use just one of those little wood cubes from the Dollar Tree, paint it green so you can't really see it and glue that onto that little cross beam. And it leaves me like a little slot here where I can glue our apple in place, kind of a skew like that. And I think this turned out so cute. Our little green farm truck with an apple in the back. Isn't that cute? I think it's so fun. Okay, the next DIY was super easy. I got some of these little plastic to go coffee cups. Um, from Dollar Tree and I thought we could do like a really quick like DIY cider. And I used some Dollar Tree red vinyl, um, not my favorite, and cut out hot cider in the skinny, which is that font that's very similar to the Ray Dunn font. And we're just gonna add that to the back of the coffee cup. I did try to remove like the writing that was on there with some beer nail polish remover, but it was on there to stay because you know, it is a coffee cup because they 
consider people to wash it, you know, so I'm just going to put it on the back. You'll never know because that'll be on the back of my tear tray. And I just use my paper transfer plate paper to attach that. And we have a cute little hot cider cup. It's going to be a nice tall piece for the back of my tear tray and it's super easy. And then I also found this apple. It's like a wooden apple from the Dollar Tree. It was a little darker than I wanted. And since I can, it's wood, I can just paint it. And so I go over the whole thing with some crimson. And I kind of wipe off the excess with a paper towel to kind of give it like that model appearance like an apple would have. You know, you can always decorate with real apples. I'm, I guess they wouldn't last that long, but maybe they would. Um, but I think this turned out super cute. Just a quick little thrift flip apple. And then our next DIY, I always like to do like a little greenery piece for my tear tray. So I'm going to use one of these little wood box apples from the Dollar Tree. I painted the front of it bright red and then I'm staining the rest of the little box with Antique Wax by Waverly. I just want it to look nice and rustic little apple planter box. And so I'm just trying to cover up any of the areas you might be able to see. I just went ahead and stained the inside too, just to kind of finish it off. I also distressed the red part with that Antique Wax by Waverly to kind of give it that weathered look too. And then I'm just gonna fill the little box up with some floral foam from Dollar Tree and just fill it up with these little red mini mums from Dollar Tree as well. A cute little fall flower, but the red is definitely gonna go with the apple colors. And I think that looks really cute. I'm gonna add some of the greenery in there too to fill it out. And we have a little floral piece for my apple tear tray in this cute little apple box. I don't often know what to do with these little wood boxes from Crafter Square, but I think this was actually a good use for it. I do tie some twine onto the apple stem, tie a sweet little bow in front, and I think this little DIY is ready to go. Isn't it cute? And we're almost ready to put this tear tray together, but I also wanted to decorate the area around my tear tray. So I got this great barrel from Goodwill. Look at this. It's perfect for apples. And you know, we were talking about decorating with real apples, so we might as well, it's fall. I bought a bag of apples and we're just going to fill that little thrift find barrel with apples. And this can decorate my kitchen counter next to my little apple coffee bar for fall. And I love this. It is so high quality and I just got it for a couple of dollars. You never know what you're gonna find at the thrift store. Now, these pieces I'm just gonna do for risers because sometimes things can get hidden on tear trays. So I stain a giant Jenga block from Five Below and some of these little chunky wood rounds from Dollar Tree with some Antique Wax by Waverly. I'm gonna be decorating a wood tear tray so that wood stain is gonna kind of blend in but I can raise some of those pieces up so that you can see them. I also have some hooks on my kitchen wall behind my tear tray. And so the next DIY is for that. I took one of these little um, metal, um, I guess, cookie sheets from the kitchen aisle at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to cut an apple shape out of that. We're going to decorate this little apple sign from Dollar Tree. It doesn't matter which one you get. Um, because we're going to cover it all up. And I just kind of traced that out so I could cut this out. It's going to give that apple sign such a fun texture. And what I'm going for is like a old rusty metal looking apple sign. So that is what we're going to do here. So I just cut my apple shape out. And then I'm actually going to attach it, I think, to the back, just in case you can see any of the edges around it, um, that you'd be able to see the brown and not the black. So just trimming it a little bit more to make sure it is perfect. This already has like a metal bow on it, so that kind of goes with it, right? I just attach the little tin to it with hot glue. Kind of have to be careful using hot glue on that. You might want to use a different kind of glue, but if you work quickly, um, I didn't have any problems with mine, but sometimes the hot glue can harden up. Then I trim it all around to make sure I don't have any like going over the edges. 
and make sure that it is all down and flat by gluing that to the edges. Now there was one area here that I probably melted a little bit with the glue. I didn't get it on quite perfect, but I thought we could use one of those little wood signs from the Dollar Tree to kind of disguise that. And I also want to do something with the apple stem. So I just take some Dollar Tree twine, tie that on there, wrap that all the way around. To finish that off, I also make a quick little hanger for the back out of um, the twine and attach it with hot glue. I'm going to stain a little welcome fall, fall sign to kind of go over the area there that kind of got damaged. And then I use Antique Wax by Waverly to kind of make it look rusty. So I do that by going around all the edges that you can kind of see peeking out. It's going to kind of frame out our little apple sign. And then I'm also going to try to age it a little bit with that too. So I hot glue our little welcome fall right here underneath our leaf. I turned my leaf around so the green part was on front. And then I used that Antique Wax by Waverly, just kind of stippled it all over to kind of give it like a rusty appearance, just wiping off any excess with a paper towel. And that is how it turned out. So let's put this apple tear tray together. There's the little apple press that we tied to the ring. And we're going to put like the flowers in the back as well as our little cup of hot cider. Our little today's pie apple sign right here. So next to that, of course, we'll have to put um, this cute little apple and then the star of the show, our little DIY apple pie. I love that. And it goes perfect next to that little chalkboard. Now for the bottom, we have that little Target pick your own apple sign. We have our wood bin full of farm fresh apples. You can't really see that sign, so that's one reason I made the little spacers that I stained to kind of perk that up so you can see it. And that apple from um, Goodwill too, you couldn't really see that, so I used a couple of those little risers to lift that up as well. I love the little apple kitchen timer, and here's our little DIY green truck with a big chunky apple in the back. And then I thought some of these little vine balls from Dollar Tree would look really kind of cute, kind of matches like the wood and stuff we've got going around. And I needed like just a little bit of filler here and there on my tear tray to fill it up. And then I have some a greenery left over too um, from a Dollar Tree plant. And I'm just going to kind of use that for scatter too to kind of look like apple leaves just to fill in any of the dead space areas there on my tear tray and make it look nice and full. Now, I told you I was gonna decorate the area around, so here is our big wood barrel full of real apples. I'm gonna sit that next to my tear tray and then that cute little metal apple sign, I'm gonna kind of hook that here behind it, kind of a side decoration, just another fun apple DIY and I love how that turned out. Hey guys, I wanted to let you know I've introduced memberships on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos and a few other perks as well. It's just an easy way for you to support me here on YouTube and I really appreciate it. I wanna give a huge thank you to the following Crafty Beach Bum members. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job. Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Verna Noctagal, Julie Miller, Nancy Wunner, Jan, Tammy Coates, and Janae Farrington. I really appreciate your support. It means so much. And now it's time for the final reveal. You can see all of our Apple DIYs we made today. Please comment your favorite Apple DIY or find below in the comments. And don't forget to like this video. It really helps the algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Enjoy. Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can't 
can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a giant ember Everything is turning into gold When the autumn leaves are playing chasing Puts a smile up on my face Since I was a little child Every year for as long as I remember All the leaves were running wild Going all the way until November Turn the Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks that you might enjoy this video right here.